brand new year and an opportunity to catch up face to face with someone I've known for quite some time now. His name is Oscar Yildiz. He's a newly re-elected member of the Moreland City Council. Welcome back. Thanks, George. Great to get you in the studio. Last time we spoke, you were almost getting ready for the elections. They were coming and they were impacted by COVID and you were giving us a sense of all the things that were going on behind the scenes to make sure that people could safely do what they needed to do. And uh, as uh, we tend to do in this democracy, when the time comes to vote, you go in, you, you take your, your moment and you make your decision. Now, there's this growing disease, it seems to me, in our councils across Australia. Uh, more and more deals are done back house, back of the, uh, of the door, instead of the council rooms, and people are turning up and uh, most of these things now, these are decisions, are not done where they should be done or meant to be done, but they're all, almost a fait accompli. Uh, do you get a sense that that, is, in case, that in, is indeed the case and what we're seeing more and more of? 100%, George. I mean, a lot of the Why? councils... Look, I mean, there are some popularly elected mayors. Yep. For example, Sally Cap is elected yep. by the, yep. the, the residents yep. of yep. the City of Melbourne. So if she... With a uh, clear margin. Of course. As yep. she, and, and she received a massive vote and congrats to, to, to her. She's done really well, Sally. Um, and She's she, got a big challenge too. Oh, absolutely. Because 100%. just as they've planned so many initiatives to get Melbourne City up and running, uh, COVID uh, outbreaks have come backwards and forwards and, yeah. and we've seen a stop and start and a stop and start and that doesn't help confidence in any way, shape or form. No. But let's come back to Moreland she's, City. She's doing well. But you, you were on at uh, one stage, my, the, the reading and the flavour of uh, what we're being told, you were a candidate to be mayor. I was. Look, I did. I actually did get the highest votes out of all the candidates. So there were so fifty-one what? candidates running. So what's election. happened? Why didn't you get the mayor? Um, look, the, the mayoral the, robes, as they say. Yeah. Uh, again, the popularly elected mayor is elected for four years through the residents in Moreland and in most councils in Victoria. There are seventy-nine. Um, most councils, unfortunately, have the the council laws elect the mayor, so the the community doesn't have that opportunity to. You know, whoever's got the highest votes doesn't become but, the. But mayor. you were given assurances before the vote that if should you get the yeah, numbers, you'd be the, you'd be the mayor. Yeah, so and, what happened? And, and the thing that hurts the most, George, and it's really hard to swallow, is the fact that um, you know the night before um, there were discussions throughout the weeks leading up to the vote. Um, I was pretty much given that that assurity, but it wasn't until probably a good half an hour, 45 minutes before the, the meeting that it was uh, it was an absolute 100%. And throughout that whole afternoon, I, I spoke to a number of the councillors to say, look, you know, please don't embarrass me. Even the night before, I, I the three councillors that I met up, met up with the night before who um, I wasn't 100% sure whether they were committed to their, their word, I met with them and, and I did say to them, I said, look, I'm begging you, don't, don't embarrass me in front of my family and friends um, because if you're not gonna vote for me tomorrow, let me know now so I can prepare. So, and that they said, look, you know what, go home and, and prepare your speech. Um, we'll, we're going to support you 100%. And I, I did that. I went home, I prepared my speech and, and you know, m messaged all my friends and family and here they are all watching and at 6.55pm, the meeting starts at 7, I'm just about to get up and, and do my speech and I'll receive a text message from someone who I, I trusted, someone who I've known for years, someone whose um, family I know really well and, and I just thought, surely this is a joke, this can't happen because I've written a speech um, and, and I spent hours, you know, that morning, the yeah, night crafting before... Crafting it to make crafting sure it represents speech. what you want. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a dirty game. Politics is a dirty game. You know, I mean, the saying about if you want a friend in politics, get, politics, get yourself a dog. Um, <laughs> that, that's absolutely true because, uh, you know, how can you do that to someone? How can you look at that person in the face knowing that you've made that commitment but suddenly... You've, you've changed your mind in seven I minutes. have a more important question. How do you work with those people knowing that they're prepared to do that to you? It's, it's really hard, George, because, look, I think in life, you know, the key things are integrity. I really believe in that. I think having, having ethics and being absolutely honest. Uh, and if you don't have those three things in life, and no matter what you do, I couldn't care what, is it, what you do for a living, but if you haven't got integrity, respect, and, and, and of course, ethics, um, and you're not honest with yourself, then, then it's, it's why are you in that role? Uh, you and I first met uh, years ago when you were a very big player uh, uh, at getting this, uh, the Bully Zero Foundation Correct. up and running. Correct. And I can remember a lot of us came on board purely and simply because we believed in Oscar Yildiz and what you were putting together and the support and the, and the teamwork that you were planning. 
and the result was a fantastic occasion and a tremendous initiative and, uh, and a pathway to help so many school children who were being faced with uh, bullying that they'd never seen before. Now, fast forward all these years on, you've moved well beyond that, you're in the council and you're on the cusp of the, the mayoral uh, role and you find yourself in a brand new year now as a member, as a sitting member of the Moreland City Council team. And I'm fascinated. What, how, do you, how do you put your mind in gear to attend to all the things that you need to as a councillor? I think what I want to do, George, in the next three years in particular, and well, almost four years now, I should say, um, is just focus on the residents because at the end of the day, that's what's about. Um, they had no idea this was happening, and and a lot of residents don't even realise. They think, oh, I've voted for the mayor. No, you've actually voted for the council law to be elected or the candidate to be elected, mm. and then the council laws elect the mayor. And look, if I can continue focusing on the key things that that will give a return to to the residents that voted for me or the Moreland community, that's something I feel quite satisfied in being able to do. So just take me back for a moment. You say you don't vote for the mayor, you, mo you vote for the, the, the councillor, and then of course the council decides the, the, the best credentialed person or the person most capable of delivering the result is the, the mayor, male or female. Um, that seems extraordinary that it's 2021 and we live in, in a society where we pick the Premier, we pick the, the, the Prime Minister, and yet we don't pick the most important local councillor um, for Mayor. I yeah. would have thought, do Look, all the councils do that? Or yeah, is that just Moreland City? Most of them do. There's only a handful. I mean, you know, Ballarat, Geelong and yeah. the City of Melbourne. But because everyone knew that Sally Cat was the Lord Mayor. Yeah, and she was running for that position as well as being a councillor. Correct, correct. Um, look, you know, in federal, state, and local politics, George, it's never the best person for the job. I mean, I, I've, I've had meetings with senior so politicians. The one with the I don't want to give names. Is that, it's the one is that with the sharp. Playing? Absolutely, and it's not. You now, you, you, there are some politicians, honestly, that 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 I look at and go, "How did you become a politician?" Well, I know how they became a politician. They did the numbers. Um, they made sure that they scratched someone else's back, and they, or or they they knifed someone, or they shafted someone, and that and that. That's how a lot of these people get to where they, they've been. And yeah. I say, you know what, again, ethics, honesty, you've got to look at your kids in the face, you've got to have integrity. Sure. For me to look at you in the face, smile at you, this is exactly what happened, George. Half an hour before the mayoral vote, I'm laughing with you. I'm saying you would be a fantastic mayor. You're going to, you, you, unity is important, cohesion is important. You're going to do a great job for the, for the city of Moreland and you're going to get the team together and da 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 and laughing yeah. and carrying on. And then half an hour later you do this. like. How can you do that? How can you embarrass me in front of my friends and family? And this is what, look, this doesn't happen often because I know the backroom, you know, rats in the ranks and the back, back, you know, background deals and the backroom deals, they do happen, George. They have to happen because it's hard for the administration also to not know who's going to be the mayor um, to prepare a speech because often the speeches are prepared by the organisation. Um, and in this case, it was prepared by the organisation. Tell me about the council, um, uh, alle the allegations uh, uh, of some skullduggery behind the scenes, yeah. the police investigating. What was all that about? Oh, there's allegations that a candidate um, potentially stole stole um, votes, uh, as in uh, you, you receive your postal vote. Are we on the top? Of, uh, are we on top of this? Are the police looking into it? Is it is it nearly over, or are we still waiting for an outcome? Oh, look, I, I think this is going to drag on. I think it'll drag right. on till at least probably May, June, July, if not beyond that. Um, and again, you know, it, it's. It, has it happened before in other council elections? It has, mm. um, but this one happened in my ward, and and from what I know, the investigation is continuing. And right. uh, and uh, look, I think it's going to stretch. So stand out by, we might find out some news. Yeah. Um, before we go, I've got to ask you about COVID. Uh, as a councillor, you're right on top of the needs of the council, and some of the things that you've had to do a bit differently. Uh, are we are we getting smarter at uh, attending to the challenges and the problems? And of course, with people staying at home. What are we seeing? More and more waste than ever before, which puts an, a load on so many systems that are part of the, the council. 
Uh, are we getting better at that or, oh, or are we still struggling? You, you're right about that. I mean, the, the, Costs the, go the up. Oh, absolutely, the illegal dumping that's going on at the moment, George. I mean, it's unfortunate, but a lot of our street, you know, our nature strips are, are flooded with, you know, mattresses and, and a lot of hard waste. Um, our hard waste collection is in, in April, and I say to residents, please hang on, wait till then, because for us to send out a team every time we have to go pick up a mattress, there's a massive cost. Um, there's still a lot of caution around COVID. There's still a lot of anxiety, I think, out there, and people are just wanting this to go away and, and completely go away so we can move on with our lives. Did the various ethnic communities within those in the councils, the various councils, did they get the message? Did they get to understand? Or are we still struggling to break down the translation barrier? I think we've we've got through to them, but a lot of them won't accept it, and and I can understand why they don't accept, they won't wow. accept it because they really, especially our elderly, um, who were you know regularly interacting with each other, and what I'm finding not just with the elderly, George, I'm finding with that a lot of community groups and social groups that disconnect that's happened, the the the, the stress, so the believers, the, mental, and the non-believers, yeah, and the mental ill, the the, the, the issues it's causing the um, in terms of depression, and I mean not only in our young but our elderly, our, our even our, our sporting clubs are struggling too because they're not sure what's going on either. Correct. And, and yeah. look, we've, we've been very good. There hasn't been yeah. many cases in the last, I think, yeah. 20... No cases in the last yeah, 26 correct. days. Only so in the well, hotels. Not, only in the quarantine hotels. That's correct. Another, that's another, correct. another three or four cases over the last few days. Um, speaking of sports clubs, I know you've been a big player, the Campbell Reserve. Yeah. That's never looked better. I think the, other, the last time Campbell Reserve yeah. looked this good would have been probably 1956 and young Ted Smith was probably ready to play for Morland City. 100%. Uh, and, and, and train with the Australian Olympic team at the MCG. It looks beautiful. The, I'm, the, I'm, look, you've, I'm, you've taken the cricket pitch away. That was number I don't one. know where it's gone, yeah. but, uh, and the new stand and all of that sort of stuff. Looks terrific. It looks, in fact, just driving up here now, I'm just pretty proud. I'm still a recreational leisure counsellor, sharing it with another counsellor, Helen Davis, and I'm pretty passionate about sport and rec. And, and look, there's other clubs that also need our support. Um, I'm the number one ticket holder for Moreland Zebras. I'm really proud of that. And, uh, and look, I'm, I'm happy with what's happened at Moreland City. Um, again, you know, you mentioned names there, but you know, the, the guy that's really behind that, Morris Bozzetto, is in, in, a, champion and, he is a champion. And he continues to do some incredible work at the club. Player, ex-player, coach, coach ex-coach, now president, president, ex-president. Yep. He's back again. Yeah, and look, soccer's soccer, uh, sport in general is struggling at the moment. Uh, uh, soccer is too, but sport in general, and I just, I just hope we can we can transition out of this as quickly as we possibly can, and and uh, and hopefully you know move on with our lives because it is it's it's holding a lot of people back, George and. And it's changed our lives. And, and people are saying it might take two, three years to recover. I hope it doesn't take that long. I know, I'm with you. Uh, Oscar Yildiz, thank you very much for joining us. Oscar uh, promised us uh, the new year that he'd make an effort to join us in the studio. He has on the informer. Well Thanks done, so and all thank the best. You. Thank you, lovely to be here, thank you.